Yo, Bytor here. Before we begin, the Hardware Ninja team and I wanted to express our most sincere gratitude to everyone in this little community. Whether you have been here from day one or are just joining us, we appreciate your support. Over the past few days, we have received several emails and comments stating how helpful and relevant this content is for you. We will strive to continue making this high quality content. One more thing before I forget. We recently surpassed 250 subscribers on our channel thanks to you, our community. We have an ambitious goal of reaching 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We are planning something very special for the community once we have reached this milestone. I cannot divulge too much right now, but it may involve virtual interviews with tech leads from high tech companies. So please share our community with your friends and family and let's smash this goal together. Be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for additional bonus questions. All right, now let's get into the content for today. This comes from an interview for an analog design engineer position to help develop analog IP for SOCs. The interviewer will start by asking, can you draw a current mirror? Most people will draw a structure that looks like this. With an ideal current source driving the diode and a load connected to the output device. After you're done drawing the circuit, the interviewer may ask you the following question. What are the properties of a current source? Let me pause here for a second and stress how common this question is. It's simple, it's basic, and it works. Yet, a lot of interviewees seem to freeze when asked this. Do yourself a favor and understand the basics before jumping into complex questions. Only by understanding the basics, you will be able to navigate through complex questions. Anyway, the answer the interviewer is looking for, of course, is infinite output impedance and also that the current source is able to deliver the current independent of the voltage drop across it. Those are the properties of a current source. So the interviewer will say something along the lines of, you may already know this, but in an actual SOC, we do not have ideal current sources. So, how do we build that current source in an SOC? There are, of course, several answers. One of your answers may be a bandgap reference or a resistor. Let's imagine you did say that you needed a bandgap circuit, but the interviewer wanted to push you, which may happen, and say, Okay, imagine for now I do not have a bandgap circuit available. What else can I do? In this situation, you will very likely say the resistor. There is a third answer. Can you tell me what it is? Let me know in the comment section or through email. So now you redraw the circuit with the resistor instead of the current source like this. The interviewer will now say the following. Imagine your devices have infinite output resistance and zero channel length modulation. What is wrong with this implementation? I am going to give you about 10 seconds for you to pause this video and answer the question on your own. All right, so this question is specifically asked to test your knowledge and experience. It is one thing to work with ideal power supplies and resistors and make things work in simulations than it is to design and build components for an SOC. Notice again the nature of the open-ended question. The interviewer is not asking you how current sources work or how current mirrors work. He's not even asking you about topologies. So your answer should sound something like this. Well, we know that the transistor's drain current will be dictated by the transistor's VGS. That VGS will be shared with the output transistor to get the mirror in effect. Notice here, I haven't yet addressed the interviewer's question, but by answering like this, I'm doing two things. First, I'm reminding myself of how current sources work. And second, I'm letting the interviewer know that I do understand how current mirrors work. This will give you major points. Anyway, let's carry on with the answer. You can tell the interviewer that since they mentioned that there is zero channel length modulation, the only thing to worry about is keeping a constant VGS. And here we have the cipher, the quote, quote, trick part of the question. So we can ask ourselves out loud, what things can affect my VGS? 
Since we are working in an SOC, it is more than likely that our supply is not ideal and we will at some point have noise or even probably droop events, not to mention the change in DC conditions. Any change in my supply will change the delta V across the resistor. This will change the drain current going into my diode device, which in turn will change my VGS. With the change in VGS, we will have change in output current, something that is very undesirable. So that's one thing. Now, let's assume my supply to be ideal. Real resistors have tolerances, especially resistors within an SOC. If my resistance varies by, let's say, plus minus 10%, sometimes 20%, so will my output current. Again, not something we want. Finally, with this given topology, the change in a process corner or temperature can change the threshold voltage of my devices and that will change its VGS. So I will not have consistent currents across temperature or different SOCs. Let me pause the interview here for a second and ask you the following. What about the ground? What if we have a noisy ground? Do I have a problem? I'll let you answer that by yourself. The interviewer at this point will acknowledge that you understand how current mirrors work and will likely move to other questions. Questions like, what can I do to solve my problem? Or something like, assume I now actually have my ideal current source. How do I set the VGS of my device? Meaning, what VGS do I want on that current mirror? They may also ask questions about different topologies like cascoding and white swing cascodes. We will make a follow-up video to address these more traditional interview questions later on. In the meantime, that's all we have for you today. Thank you once again for your support and making the Hardware Ninja community a great community. If you found this video interesting and helpful, please smash that subscribe and like button. Cheers.